This session provides some general tips and tricks on the general use of GeoStudio 2007. GeoStudio has many features not directly related to the main solver calculations. Features to aid with, for example, adding clarity to the problem definition and presentation of the results like, for example, labeling and sketch lines or construction lines, uh, creating properly scaled engineered drawings, engineering drawings, importing data from other sources, inspecting the analysis results details, and finally reporting the problem definition and results in your reports. To start with then, we will talk about a set page. Set page allows you to define the size of the paper you want to eventually use to print and present the analysis drawing. Usually this is governed by how you wish to present the analysis results to somebody else, usually as presentation in a report. Uh, obviously, the most common paper sizes are letter size, 8.5 by 11, which we usually in engineering use as in landscape, landscape mode at 11 by 8.5, at 11 inches by 8.5 inches. Or in the metric system, we commonly use the A4 paper size, and in landscape mode, it's usually it is always 297 by 210 millimeters. Now these are common paper sizes for reporting, but often it is convenient to use a larger paper size and very common engineering drawing sizes for reports are 11 by 17 or 17 inches by 11 inches in landscape mode, or we use the A3 paper size, which is 420 millimeters wide by 297 millimeters high. Using a larger paper size is highly recommended because a page size affects the drawing scale. The smaller the page size, the higher the required scale. The higher the page size, the lower the required scale. And the objective you should strive for is to work at as small a scale as possible. The smaller the scale, the more accurate the computer screen interaction. Ultimately, it reduces down to how much does one pixel on, this, on the monitor represent, because this is the level of accuracy that we can work with is pixels, and so to work at smaller scales allows more accurate interaction with the computer screen. GeoStudio also allows you to work at a true engineering scaled drawing. By definition, what this means is, for example, if we say the scale is 1 to 100, it means that 100 millimeters on paper is 100 millimeters in the field, or 0 0.1 meters in the field. One centimeter on paper is 100 centimeters or one meter in the field. One inch on paper is 100 inches in the field or 8.33 feet in the field. So we describe the scale as a ratio of 1 to 100, 1 to 200, and so forth. And as we will see, we highly recommend that you use uh, good numbers like 100, 200, 150, rather than a decimal number. It makes it very difficult to interpret the scale if it is some fraction of a number. To illustrate the GeoStudio implementation, the idea is that a drawing printed at a zoom factor of 100% 
a zoom factor of 100% will be printed at a true scale. In this particular case here, we have set a scale in this example of 1 to 100. That means that one centimeter on paper is equal to 100 centimeters in the field or one meter in the field. We can see here that we have on our physical scale 20 centimeters. The 20 centimeters represents from 0 to 20 meters in the field. And that each of these tick marks represents 2 meters which in turn in the physical dimension is 2 centimeters. Or yes, 2 centimeters. I recognize that we don't use a true scale all that much anymore in the uh, computer-aided drafting world. However, the demonstration is to show here the GeoStudio implementation and to demonstrate that it is possible to produce a printed drawing of your analysis at a true engineering scale should you find that desirable in your reporting. The guideline is that all objects on the drawing should be readily visible and legible when the drawing is viewed at a zoom factor of 100%. Stated another way, we should try and select a scale such that all the objects on the drawing are readily visible and legible when the drawing is viewed at 100%. So when we click on the zoom page icon, all of the objects should nicely fit onto the page. That is the intended objective. There is also some control over the positioning of the coordinate system on the page and this is done by specifying min and max values. The minimum value, the minimum value x and y fall on the lower left corner of the paper size that you have selected and the maximum XY falls on the upper right corner of the paper size that you have selected at a particular at a particular specified scale. We're going to demonstrate this a little bit more in just a few seconds. Let us then open up GeoStudio and demonstrate how to set the scale and how to se select the paper size and then put a scaled axis on the paper and position it on the paper. Let us assume that we have an engineering uh, analysis where we want the X to go from at least 0 to 150 meters and in the Y direction to go from 0 to 50 meters and that uh, we are going to decide to use a paper size of 11, 17 by 11 inches. Going then to GeoStudio and creating a new analysis in this particular case I have uh, selected a slope W analysis but any analysis can be used for this portion of the illustration. So the first thing we should do is say set page and we decided in this case to make it 17 inches wide and 11 inches high. If we now click on the zoom page icon it gives us a outline of the entire page that we are going to produce our drawing on. The next stage is to set the scale under the command set units and scale we'll go then to set units and scale we are going to use the metric units and we will uncheck this option here 
and then we will say in the x direction we want to go from minus 20 say up to a positive value of 150. In the y direction let's say that we want to go from minus 20 up to a uh, positive value of 60. What GeoStudio now has done is with these dimensions on the selected paper size we would need a scale of 1 to 394 in the horizontal direction and a scale of 1 to 286 in the vertical direction. We don't want to work at these odd scales. Now we can recheck this option here, calculate maximum extents from scale and origin. And now we should refine this and make it an even number like 400. And it should be the same in both the horizontal and vertical directions, which now says that our engineering dimensions can go from in the x direction from minus 20 up to 152.7 and in the y direction from minus 20 up to a positive value of 191.76. So the procedure is if you know the approximate extents of the problem is to uncheck this option type in the approximate extents, then check this option here, and then refine the scale to a nice even uh, number as something like 1 in 400. Now if we look at our page and we select the option of seeing the coordinates together with our cursor, we said that we wanted to go from minus 20 to minus 20. That means that we have approximately minus 20, minus 20 at this corner of the page. You can see the dimensions here. It's approximate. And then we have the extents in the other direction at this corner. And if we move our cursor to this corner here, we see we go up to 152.6 and 91.76 in the y direction. Now let us sketch an axis on this page. To begin with, we'll turn on our snap to grid and make our grid spacing, say, 5 meters. The distance between each of the points is 5 meters. Then we say sketch an axis. We want the uh, label at the bottom to be meters and the y coordinate or the vertical direction to be meters. And then when we click on OK, our cursor turns into a plus sign. And let's move the cursor to 0, 0. And holding down the left mouse button, we can drag a box such that the y coordinate is 150 and the sorry the x coordinate is 150 and the y coordinate is 50 and now we have an approximate scale the font size is probably too small for a 17 by 11 inch drawing so we can increase the axis label font sizes in this case I'm going to try 18 it is fairly legible. Also, let us shift the drawing to the left a bit with set unit scale. Instead of x being minus 20, let's make it minus 15. And we can now shift the drawing over to the left a little bit. Notice that when we click on the Zoom Page button, we see the entire page. In order to see the entire page, we are currently at a zoom factor of 68%. If we now were to say that I want to see 
it at a zoom factor of a hundred percent then I cannot see my entire drawing but it is at this zoom factor that we should be able to see clearly and with the naked eye all the objects that have been defined as part of the problem definition. Clicking on the Zoom All Objects button, this is all the objects we have defined so far, and so we see everything on the page and at a zoom factor of 77%. This then illustrates how to select your printed page size and working page size, and uh, the encouragement is to select a page size that is larger rather than smaller such that you can work at a smaller scale. Also we have demonstrated here in summary as to how to approximate an, ap an appropriate scale, and we would highly encourage you to always uh, select a scale that is the same in the horizontal and vertical direction and the scale number should be a nice round number like 1 to 100, 1 to 200, 1 to 250 or some nice rounded number. It should not be 1 to 133.36. This makes the scaling uh, rather difficult to use and interpret so we would encourage you to use with uh, round numbers when you select the scale.